Spilt milk, right? Yep, spilt milk. Spilt milk. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Get on. There we go. Got the first one on. A lot of looky loos. There you go, first kokanee of the day. Awesome. That's a good sized kokanee, too. Great. Not bad for a winter kokanee. There you go. Sweet. First kokanee of the day on a little cast master. Just jigging spoons. So today they seem to be all over the water column, anywhere from right underneath the ice to all the way down on the bottom on 90 feet. A couple of them. Actually, those might be bubbles coming up from the bottom. There's a fish over to the right, though. If I can get his attention. Oh, he's coming. Ooh, I missed him. Missed him twice. There's another fish, though. A little competition going. Oh, that was a miss. My fault. My fault. Always hit it on that drop. There we go. Got him. That's a nice size kokanee. A couple more down there, so I'm gonna hurry up and try and get this turned around. They really like that vertical action. You gotta keep it moving. If you let it sit still, they just seem to lose interest some away immediately. Trying to get these, there's a little school of kokanee right there. Trying to get their attention. They are swimming away from me, so. Gotta make enough disturbance to, they can pick it up with the lateral line. Come on. Oh, there we go. I got somebody's attention. Lucky leaves. There we go. Got him. Always on the drop. Whew. Another nice size kokanee. That's a chunker. Not a lot of light down there because the ice is about 20 inches thick. So I'm really using the action of this cast master to send out strong signal and hopefully their lateral lines will pick that up. Oh, there's a fish down looking at the static rod. I haven't had many bites on it, but it's got their attention. So I can get down there and get their attention. That other static rod's getting a good sniff, but not biting on it. Let's see if we can get down there and into that fish to commit to this spoon. All right. There we go. There we go. He didn't want to eat that static rod, but he wanted the spoon. Perfect. Another nice kokanee. So I'm just using Gulp, Berkeley maggots in pink, and then I've soaked these in Procure's uh, anise and shrimp water-soluble scent. So 
that water soluble stuff, if you try and put oil on those gulf or the gulp shrimp, they uh they just get sticky and nasty. Um so with that water soluble, those gulp shrimp, they just or those gulp maggots just absorb all that oils and uh, it's really easy to handle. It, st and it stays firm, and it'll stay on the hook really well. Um, oh, there's fish. There he got him. Uh, trying to keep up. He's swimming with me. Swimming with me. Little guy. Oh, there's another fish down there at the uh, static rod. See, having that dead rod down there, even though it doesn't catch fish, it gets their attention and holds it there while you're busy, you know, catching other fish or um, pulling fish, targeting fish at other depths. Oops, there's fish. Oh, I missed that out. I missed that. How did I miss that? The key with this coconut is just to keep that action. You got to have a light tip to detect it. Because I'm, I'm looking for that, that spring bobber to come up as I drop down. Got him. Got him all the way at the bottom down there. 90 feet down. Ooh, it's a long way down there. I'm just using a medium light rod here with six pound braid and a six pound four carbon meter. There we go. Fish number nine. Nice fish. Pretty. There's still some down there in the bottom. I only need one more fish, but it's been almost an hour since I got a fish. And most of the fish that are biting, or at least I've had nibbles on, are deep. So I'm going to switch over once I don't get anything out of this school. They definitely seem like they're slowing down. It's getting closer to noon, so it might just be that the bite's off. So I'm going to go from this tiny little 1 16th ounce to a larger quarter ounce Castmaster. This is the rainbow trout pattern. There we go. Had to go all the way to the bottom for that one. Feels decent. Sometimes having that heavier spoon just helps you get down and fish deeper, faster. You can also feel the bite a little better. There we go, nice. Oh no! <laughs> Lost it in the hole. That sucks. Oh, this last fish is killing me. Killing me. There we go. Wasn't gonna miss that guy. That hook set. That was one that came into that dead stick and then I came up to it and got him. We go through the hole. There we go. Little guy. But we'll take it. It's my tenth fish of the day, which is my limit. So I'll post links to uh, all the products that I use in here. Today I was just using Castmaster spoons. I am on Lake Bonaparte and they do have lead restrictions on this lake so make sure that you do not use lead. 
on your higher ice fishing. So little brass spoons like this or tungsten jigs will work great. Get some quality kokanee here so you don't have to have a boat to get out on the lake and catch some fresh salmon in the middle of winter in inland northwest. All right, guys, be safe out there. Be sure to practice your social distancing and uh, hopefully we'll get through this really crummy time um, that the nation's going through. And uh, just get out on the ice or out on the water and enjoy some fishing. See you. Be healthy, everyone. Bye.